My name is Nicholas Fish, and I'm here to talk to you about two next generation data integration tools. Those are Apache NiPy and Kylo. Uh, we won't do really a big deep dive on those things because we don't really have time for that. We'll just kind of uh, dip our toes in the water, so to speak. Uh, first, a bit about me. I work for Think Big. They're a data consultancy firm. Uh, we work mostly with uh, larger corporations, enterprises around the world. Uh, we have offices all over the place. I'm personally based out of the Copenhagen office. Uh, and I'm working together on this Tesco project together with my friends from Virtus Lab, and they're the ones that offered me the opportunity to speak here tonight. Uh, without further ado, I have prepared two live demos for you tonight. Uh, we'll see how they go. Uh, you can have your money back if they don't work out. Very mm -hmm. So this is Apache NiFi, uh, or at least the web front end for it anyways. Uh, it comes from the NSA. It was originally called Niagara Files, and they use it for pipelining data around between different sources. I don't know what the NSA's use cases were exactly, but maybe you use your imaginations there. <laughs> Anyways, the way that it works is you have one or more processors that you can kind of drag and drop onto a canvas. Here, for example, I can drag a, a processor of my choice to create here. And these processors have you know, both types and then some tags associated with them. For example, if I wanted to see what's going on with uh, some streaming type processors, I can search for stream and it finds, according to the tags or maybe the name of the processor, uh, about nine different processors that uh, could maybe help you with that type of work. Uh, I'm showing version 1.0 of NiFi tonight. I think the current release is 1.3, so I think there are well over you know, 200 processors that can take uh, different actions that you would commonly want to take with your uh, big data setup. Uh, for now, let's say that I get a requirement from my uh, product owner. He or she wants to uh, have some random data generated uh, and placed into a local directory on the file system. So once you've uh, installed uh, NiFi, uh, you could achieve this by uh, dragging and dropping, for example, a, gener a generate flow file processor onto your canvas. Uh, and, and you can see in this state that the, the processor doesn't really do anything to begin with. So we can take some steps to uh, make some configurations to tweak uh, the generic functionality of this processor to do the things that we want. So I'll pull up the settings here on the processor and look into the properties here. And I can choose how, how big I want these uh, files to be. I'll just uh, generate one kilobyte of data here. Uh, I can also generate more than one flow file at a time. And I can choose which format I want it to be in. In this case, I'll choose a textual format. One thing to note here is that what's going to be generated coming out of this processor is not just a payload of data. It's what uh, NiFi terms as a flow file. And so that's both a payload, so that the actual content that's within that data, as well as like some associated attributes uh, with each of those flow files as they put, pass through uh, this flow-based programming mechanism. So I will go ahead and apply those changes. And in order to land that data on my uh, local file system here, I'll drag and drop another processor. Uh, and uh, Apache NiFi calls this the put file processor, which is just taking a file from a, a flow file, passing through the system, and drop it onto the local file system. Once again, I will configure this processor. I will just put the information in my, uh, let's call it temp and uh, test uh, data directory. Uh, and uh, I can actually, from this processor, change some other uh, behaviors, but I'm not going to change anything here right now. So right now we have two processors on our canvas. Both of them are giving me some, uh, some errors because there's some uh, misconfiguration. But the first thing that I want to do is to hook these together. And I will do that using uh, what NiFi terms as a connection. Uh, and you can see that here it's generating a connection from the generate flow file processor to the put file processor for the success relationship. So each one of these processors can uh, have one or more relationships from which they can output uh, different flow files. Uh, in this case, the generate flow file processor can only succeed. It can only uh, generate data. There are no like failure paths coming out of this. So I'll go ahead and add that. And you can see that now this uh, generate flow file processor is no longer have this uh, red uh, exclamation mark here, but instead is, is showing that it's running in a stop state. Uh, and if I were to run this right now, NIFI would actually just run this as quickly as it possible as according to what the system is able to do. Uh, so I will get a lot of data very quickly. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to tweak the scheduling on this processor. Instead of running it every zero seconds or as quickly as I can, I'm just going to run it every five seconds here. Uh, and that will help uh, keep things in a way that my little MacBook will be happy with here. 
Uh, I can go ahead and start that now, even though only part of the system is working, and we can see immediately that I end up with uh, some some flow files are being generated in here. I'll try to zoom in, maybe if we can see a bit better, especially the people in back. So you can see if I keep on refreshing, every five seconds I'm getting additional flow files in here, and I can actually go in and look at what's in that that queue. I mean, it's not just a a, a straight pipeline, but it's actually a, a queue of different things that can be queued up, and there's different lineage associated with each of those things. I can I can look at what NiFi terms the provenance here. If I look over on this uh, right side of each of these flow files passing through the system, uh, there's not really much to see here because all that's happened is that. Uh, the information was generated by that earlier processor, so we have one create action. But once you have some more complicated flows in NiFi, this provenance is a really good way to see how your flow files passing through the system are changing over time, what's been changing them, what could maybe go wrong, why things aren't as you expect. It's a really good uh, way to start troubleshooting uh, some of these flows. Uh, this put file processor is still in an aerial state, and it's because that uh, this processor actually has uh, two relationships that I could connect to, both the failure and the success relationship uh, that, that might be emitted if uh, things go either well or not so well. But I don't, don't want to do anything with those right now, so I'm just going to uh, cap those off. Uh, NiFi terms this as, as auto-terminating the relationships. And we can see now that that's in a stop, or in a stop state, but it's ready to run. Uh, at this point, I have 19 uh, files waiting to be written to my local file system, so I'll go ahead and start that put file processor, and immediately all, all of that uh, queue is dumped into my local file system. If I pull up a shell here, which I should have done earlier. I can see that all those files landed in my temp uh, test data directory. So there they are. We can cat one out just to see. It's one kilobyte of text data. Nothing really groundbreaking there. Just some random data. But uh, at this point, I've met my product owner's requirements. Now we have some uh, test data we can use on the local file system. So let's say I get a new requirement now from my product owner. They want to not just uh, take. They want to take all those files that we've generated and put them on a distributed file system. They want to put them in HDFS so other people around the cluster can make use of them. Uh, NiFi can uh, quickly help with this. I can add a, a, a git file processor. It's the antonym for the put file. This is just going to pick up some data from whatever uh, directory I specify in the file system. Once again, I'll specify this uh, temp uh, test data directory. And I'm not going to bother with uh, slowing this down or anything. I'll just let it pull the data as fast as it wants to. And I can also drop a processor to uh, drop these files into HDFS. I think that's put HDFS. Yeah, there it is. And I'll create a connection between those two. Once again, I'll cap off those relationships from the put HDFS processor that I don't want to make use of, both failure, success. apply that. Uh, and at this point, I can actually go ahead and run the both processors, except the put HDFS processor is in, is in an error state. Uh, I've forgotten to specify the directory here, for example. So I can go in and uh, even though I, I, I may not have been aware of the problem, uh, NiFi is kind of helping to guide me to where there may be issues in my flow by directing me to these uh, different uh, states that the processors are in, especially making these errors apparent. Uh, I will show another way that NiFi shows errors now, too. I will just drop this, let's call it data. It's a good generic name. I can run that processor now. It's in a valid state. And now we see that there are some runtime errors, actually, with this processor. I'll scroll over here. You can see that uh, there are some issues uh, connecting to Hadoop for whatever reason, because the Hadoop configuration resources are not set correctly. Luckily, as I'm a trained professional, I know how to fix this. But again, I want to highlight the fact that NiFi is trying to guide you to where there may be issues on the system such that you can uh, rectify those issues. Uh, I need to stop the processor first before I can make changes to it, configure it, and then if my clipboard doesn't have anything bad in it, there we go, that's the correct configuration now. Uh, and I can restart that processor. And those 19 flow files that were queued, in the, er, queued up in this connection, now they're getting dropped into HDFS. I should be able to see that at least some of them now. Yeah. 
HDFS runs a little bit. And there are my files. And you can see that they're no longer in my uh, test data directory that's empty now. So they've been picked up and dumped into there. So now let's say that I get uh, yet another requirement from my product owner. They realize that having those test files on the local file system is pretty useless actually because who can get to them except for people with permissions to that local node. Now they see the advantage of having everything in HDFS. Let's just generate the data directly into HDFS. I can easily accommodate that, uh, that ad hoc uh, change uh, by just uh, stopping this put file processor, change this plumbing a little bit, and uh, resume my flow file. And I can see now, every, every uh, five seconds, uh, some new data is getting uh, dumped into HDFS, just like uh, the requirements we're asking for. So in this way, you can really rapidly uh, make changes to the way you're, you're piping data around your system, which kind of brings me to uh, one of my first points is that when would you want to use NiFi? It's, it's, it's really best suited for moving data around your system, in, especially in like an ad hoc manner. I was, for example, at a meetup in London recently uh, with one of my uh, colleagues on the Tesco, Tesco project from Works, and he was suggesting that, for example, within an organization, one department could uh, create their own instance of NiFi, use that to pull sources from around the company. Another department could do the same thing, maybe connect the NiFi's together. And in this way, you can really rapidly build an ecosystem for the ad hoc movement of data around, uh, around different systems. Uh, what what NiFi maybe is not uh, best at is uh, is trying to do that that ad hoc movement of data as like a enterprise grade solution. I mean, if you're going to do that, then you're probably going to want to do some things on top of NiFi, and that's where Think Big comes in with the Kylo project. So I'll try another demo here. I will try to do a simple ingestion demo. We'll take some uh, flat CSV files, uh, copy them to HDFS, create a high view on that, do some validation on that data, and pro probably try to do some profiling too. So let's see how I go here. So this is Kylo. Actually, I want to show the operations view first. There are two views to Kylo. There's kind of the, the ops view that people sitting in your data center would see. And this is just kind of designed to give you like a red, green, uh, yellow indication of what, how your services are doing, how your different feeds are running. Uh, I'm looking at only the running feeds right now, but if I look over all my feeds, I can get an indication about you know, kind of what's going on in my organization at the time. I see there's some alert, probably from Ambari actually, about HDFS, maybe something to investigate. So just a question. Yes. So the previous one, I Nifi. Nifi. Uh, so it was Apache project, and Kylo is a commercial product? Or? Yeah, so the question was, is uh, Nifi and Apache, where do they sit in the open source realm of things? So Nifi is a fully Apache project. Uh, Kylo is also an open source project, but it's just on GitHub right now. It's not uh, part of any of the Apache Foundation's projects. Yeah. Uh, and then Kylo also provides another view, and this is the feed manager view where you wouldn't use this for monitoring your feeds, but by for administrating them. Uh, and probably I, the ideal setup would here would be that different people have different access and different roles within an organization would use these two different uh, views within Kylo. Uh, there is also an admin view, but we won't go into that tonight. So I will try now to create a new feed uh, and to try to do one of these uh, data ingestion. You can, you can build uh, additional templates here. Uh, I will just use this uh, standard default template that Kylo, Kylo provides out of the box. Uh, good for ingesting uh, flat data, flat schema data. Uh, this data that I have uh, at the moment is about uh, user registrations from my uh, company's website. So I will just give that a name. And I have also prepared a category here for my website. Uh, I can see there's already something there. I'm curious about that. So then I will take some input uh, from the local file system. You could also choose from a database or extend Kylo to take from other sources as suited you. Uh, and I will specifically pick up this uh, user data uh, CSV file. Uh, so any files matching that pattern, user data with one or more uh, uh, numbers and then .csv. And I could, I could go here now because we want to create a high view on this and specify the schema manually, but I don't, I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to, uh, to tell Kylo that uh, I have a sample file. It's in the CSV format, and I'll just pick that from my local file system uh, and upload that here. So Kylo has gone ahead and tried to detect the schema associated with this file from the CSV structure. How does that look? Yeah. So I can uh, now go ahead, because this, this file has some intentional data errors, 
in it. So Kylo is not really able to determine exactly what the schema is, can, is here. But if I look at this uh, drop down here, I can see some of the sample values, and I can quickly see that these are actually timestamps. Uh, so I can specify that here. Similarly, if I look at the ID, these are clearly integers. I can also go ahead and set that there. Uh, and I think another thing that would be interesting to change is the credit card, because right now Kylo picks this up as a double. I mean, it's just 16 digit numbers, right? But we don't really treat credit cards as numbers. We tend to treat them as strings. So I'll flip that over too. And there's one other field. Oh yeah, birthdays. Yeah, you can see I have birthdays. Some, some people didn't give their birthday when they signed up for the website, but that's fine. I can nonetheless uh, use uh, a date format in Hive for that. This isn't the format that Hive expects dates to be in, but we can fix that shortly here, actually. Uh, and I'll also set a primary key on that ID integer. So now I can go ahead and, and define some partitions on the table if I so wish, and I do wish. So I will set it on that uh, registration uh, timestamp and just do it by year. Uh, and next I have some additional options that I may or may not be able to set. All that uh, the standard ingestion template offers you is that you can skip the header row, which I will definitely do because I don't want those field names showing up as a row in my Hive table. That wouldn't be very useful. So Kylo is also allowing you to uh, do some indexing on the data. I will do so against the ID and the names and the email and gender of the users that are registering for my website. I can also select to have uh, profiling or not. It's turned on by default. All, most of these features are toggleable though. So if you have uh, no need for, for some of the features that I'm showing you, you can just turn them off basically. Uh, in this case, I would also like to do some standardization and validation on some of the text or on some of the data that's coming in. Uh, for example, right now, my credit cards that are coming in, they are actually the full 16-digit credit card. I don't really, the people that are working with this, they're, they're not working in the billing department, so I don't really need them to have that information. So I'm going to go ahead and mask out that uh, credit card information here. Uh, similarly here, for the uh, birth date, I think that that's not in a, a standard format as expected by Hive. So I will tell Hive that actually, well, I will tell Hive to expect that the data comes in in a different format, and then to make that conversion to just the date on my behalf. And now I can add some validation rules as well. Uh, for example, we have an email address here. Uh, it would be good to check that people are giving uh, valid email addresses, otherwise it's probably not useful to store that data or to try to correct it. Uh, and I can also validate on the IP address. I don't really know why we would be getting fed in wrong IP addresses, but good to check for it anyways. So what happens to records that do not pass validation? I'll show you in a little bit. Okay. So now I can choose a merge strategy here. I will try to upsert using the primary key. So any of those IDs that are coming in, they should uh, have be unique, we hope, and uh, come in and find their place in the table. I can also choose a format to persist this to onto HDFS. I'll choose a columnar format and uh, I'll, I'll just apply some snappy compression on it just to save a little space too. Uh, there's some additional metadata. You can set like data owners, for example. Uh, I can also put some tags on it, whatever I want. Uh, this is just to help organize when you have you know, more and more feeds over time. It can be useful to slice your, your metadata this way. Uh, I will go ahead and start this feed immediately and run it every five seconds. Uh, I could probably, these user registrations are coming in in some sort of batch format. I can choose how often I want to check. It's not a big system load because under the covers, Kylo is actually using the NiFi git file processor to pull for this. Not really a big operation in a, a larger data center. So Kylo is going to go in and reach into the different systems to configure this feed. It's eventually going to come back to me. My feed has been created. And I could go on, uh, I can see here all the information that I put in. I could go on and, and drop in this var drop zone uh, folder a, a file to be ingested, but I'm just going to take advantage of Kylo's web UI here and upload a sample file for ingestion into, the, uh, into this feed. So within a few seconds here, we hope that my VM will hold out and kick off. Yes, it's already started. So I can see here on the operations view again, we were, remember we were in the feed manager view before, that something is running. Uh, it's here, this website user registrations. 
And I can click into this and see that there is one job running associated with that feed. And I can click further into that job and, and get some information about what's going on here. Uh, there's different uh, parameters that the job was kicked off with, as well as some execution context data. You can customize that as, as it suits you. Uh, if I look in the step details, this is a really good place to go to look uh, if you have any issues with your, uh, with your feeds, because it's exposing a lot of different uh, data about each of the steps that Kylo is taking on each of these, uh, each of these steps that it's using to ingest the data. Uh, this should be updated in real time. I'm never really sure what to do with this part of the presentation because this takes like a random amount of time to complete on my VM. Uh, I think it's interesting here actually to look inside of NiFi and see what uh, Kylo is doing in the standard ingestion template under the covers. So, Kylo uses quite sophisticated logic. If I zoom out here, you can kind of see the overall view of all the steps that it takes to ingest the data. Uh, and this, each one of these processors is performing different steps, as I mentioned before. So you can see kind of how the different, uh, how you can build up a complex flow in NiFi, but again, you will want to have some sort of uh, operations management on top of that. Uh, for example, the files coming in uh, from a front end, which is not pictured here, uh, we save off an archive of the original files for debugging purposes. We are uh, copying those files into HDFS, creating a hive view, uh, running a Spark job to do some validation profiling. Quite a different things are happening here. I can actually even hear the fan uh, kicking on on my laptop as it uh, struggles to keep up with this workflow. I think now most of the data ingestion process has finished, so I can jump back into the feed. Uh, here's my user registrations feed that I created earlier. And I can look at, uh, because I have this feature enabled by default, I can look at uh, some of the data that's been profiled. So to your question earlier, what happened to the invalid data, Kylo has split that out into different tables in Hive. Uh, so you can choose uh, you know, which of those tables. If you want to look at all the data or if you just want to look at the valid data, uh, these, these exist in Hive as separate tables uh, as it pipelines the data through the system. And, and Kylo has actually identified uh, some of the uh, data that didn't pass validation for whatever reason. For example, this ID was somehow generated as 7B, not really an integer. Here's an IP address that starts with a zero. Some of these email addresses are blank. So in this way, it's starting to look into and help you determine the quality of your data. Also, you can look into uh, a profile of the data. For example, if it's completed here, and yes, it has, I can see uh, about 21% uh, of my user registrations are coming in without any birth date on them. Or I can look at uh, the different countries across the world, and I can see that most of my user registrations come from, from China. So you can quickly get an idea about what sort of data you're ingesting from your feed. So, so how many records were in the file? In that ingestion step, there were 1,000 records ingested. But uh, NiFi is, is clusterable, so you can basically scale horizontally to, to limits that we haven't hit yet. I'm not quite sure how far you could go with it. So Kyle generates some like, uh, drop in NiFi? Mm -hmm. So the question is how Kylo interacts with NiFi. So Kylo is interacting both with NiFi but also with other some subsystems. Uh, for example, to do indexing, it's using Elasticsearch under the covers. Uh, to do validation, it's kicking off some different Spark jobs. Uh, these are different things. But but primarily, Kylo is is first reaching into NiFi to kind of orchestrate these tasks on its behalf. And the way that it does it, I can show you here, is that Kylo has uh, many different uh, templates that are associated uh, with a given feed. Uh, if I go back to my feeds view, so you can see each of these uh, feeds that are running has a different template, and each of these templates will, will uh, correspond to different process groups in NiFi that are taking different actions to make this, this happen. Uh, it's using, Kylo has its own conventions for how it uses NiFi. And that's why it's able to automate the process of deploying these uh, different processors, these different workflows into, into NiFi. So, so NiFi establishes these prerequisites for Kylo? Yes. Ni else? Ni Kylo depends on NiFi to do its work. What else is required? What else is required for uh, Kylo to run? Uh, so there are some other things that you, can, that you will absolutely need to have to run Kylo. I think ActiveMQ is one of the things that is required that's used to stream the provenance events from NiFi back to Kylo. Uh, you will additionally, uh, 
most other things are optional because it will depend if you turn on those features in Kylo or not. For example, if you don't want to index your data, you won't need Elastic Index. If you do, then you should probably install Elastic Search on, on that node or configure it to connect to uh, some Elastic Search cluster. Uh, similarly, if you want to do uh, data validation standardization, you will need to have uh, Spark running somewhere uh, in, in your cluster to make that those actions happen. But most of those features are configurable. As far as the, the base level requirements, I think it's primarily NiFi, ActiveMQ, and a few other libraries, which I can't remember right now. Can I modify flows made by Kylo? So the question is if you can modify flows made by Kylo. Yes, you can. I wouldn't really recommend it. The way to do that would be to create a new template and to deploy that template into NiFi using, using Kylo. That's really the way to do it. And then, then you allow uh, Kylo to, to manage those steps on your behalf. But there's nothing stopping you from, from developing a template separately in, in NiFi, exporting that template from NiFi, and then integrating it into the Kylo experience, which is exactly the type of work that we've been doing recently on this project. Now Kylo provides some query interfaces on engines. So after data is ingested, uh, can I use Kylo query data to query data? Or only like orchestrating ETL process. Yeah. So the question is if you can use uh, Kylo to access the data. The answer is yes, you can. It has this uh, visual query functionality. I'm not really a big fan of this. Uh, you, you can make use of it. Uh, I think it's using PySpark underneath. So if you know PySpark really well, you can uh, start to wrangle data in this way. Kylo also supports a mechanism whereby, I think this is a lot more useful, rather than just like ad hoc queries of the data, you can actually build up uh, feeds, uh, it calls them data wrangling, if I remember right. Now, data transformation is the new name for it, it looks like. So you can use these data transformation, and in this way you can uh, build up uh, from, from different tables of which Kylo is aware, uh, as long as they're being ingested by Kylo. You can actually do some joins or, or other uh, types of operations using PySpark as an intermediate to, uh, to create new feeds uh, that would be transformed uh, versions of whatever you've ingested into your system. So who's responsible for scheduling the feeds? It's, it's conceptually Kylo, it's realistically NiFi, because if you look under the covers here, for example, on this user registrations feed we've created, I'll go back up to the root node of NiFi and go into this, uh, I think it's this one, yeah, website category and into my user registrations process group. I can see that what's going on underneath here is that Kylo has created this git file processor, which is it's set to run every uh, five seconds, as I specified earlier. And so it's actually NiFi that's, that's doing the real scheduling, but, but that's, that's exposed through Kylo. And is it like some notion of the tries, uh, number of the tries to do if some job fails? Mm. So the question is what Kylo does when a job fails? The answer is it depends. Uh, there are different uh, ways a job can fail, and you can also configure you know, how you want to retry uh, different ways. In the standard ingestion template, I think that there are zero retries by default, but using the magic of NiFi, you could easily create a custom template which would you know, take a flow file that failed, pass it back through the system, and then append an attribute about this has failed one time, so you know, maximum, don't, don't just keep doing the same thing and failing over and over. Probably want to have a maximum failure rate. Uh, the question is if you can use Kylo to access data on an FTP server. I think so. I don't know. Yeah, there's there's a few FTP. So you have FTP processors and SFTP processors. So that's that's definitely a mechanism that you can use. But this is, these are just the out of the box processors. Anything you can imagine to code in in Java or any other JVM compatible language, you can build a processor for. It's not super sophisticated and it's all open source. There are many examples online. So we can build any custom processor non code. You can build any custom processor in NiFi. And I think installing it is just a matter of uh, dragging and dropping a what, what uh, NiFi calls a NAR file. It's some, some version of a JAR file, basically, into its plugins directory. And I think you might need to restart the service, but that's about it. Do you run a NiFi in production was the first thing, and the second, how do you have the stage in NiFi? Uh, NiFi or Kylo? Uh, NiFi. 
The answer is we run both Kylo and NiFi in production, yes, and across to a few different, um, how do you say, companies, uh, segments of the market. Uh, and what was the second question? Uh, how do you handle staging? Staging of data. Uh, of, of the, you've got the beta, alpha, uh, and, mm. and you know, how do you stage that? Okay, so the, yeah, so the question is how do we stage the development work across, uh, across Kylo? So one thing that Kylo is uh, yet to do well is to provide a really nice SDLC. So it doesn't really uh, work well that you can deploy things from a GitHub repository. So usually what we end up doing is we install Kylo on one or more environments and then we will take a given template, deploy it, feed some test data through it, uh, and then observe the effects. But it's, it's still somewhat of a manual process. It's what not- about passwords? Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't cover passwords. Right. Yeah. Right now, when NiFi instantiates, uh, uh, call them feeds or templates from a from a template, uh, all the sensitive information will be cleared out. Uh, so we're right now developing a solution actually that uh, injects. Uh, it's it's using another uh, third party tool or a third party open source tool called NiFi Dash Config, and that's able actually to go in with a JSON uh, a JSON configuration file and go in and set those uh, those uh, passwords, other sensitive information that you wouldn't want to just have laying around in GitHub. But for this question, how you store all this configuration because you create a data flow manual mm -hmm. and how to control version of it, how to deploy it to another server. So yeah, so you're, like you're talking about NiFi? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So with, with NiFi, also one of the things that uh, we've been struggling a bit with on this project is how to build up that, that good SDLC about how do you uh, uh, make like a, a deployment through automation of, of different things. That said, you can always take a backup of several directories in NiFi, uh, but that's, that's just backups. It's not really allowing you to pipeline different templates from, you know, like your your, your virtual dev environment all the way up to your production or your many production environments. Uh, so that's something that we still uh, continue to work on at the moment. There is a great project about this in my uh, That's right. To solve it. Yep. And what's the name of the project? I don't know. Probably called NiFi CD or something like that. I think it's actually part of that NiFi group's work. I don't know if it's a, is it a separate project, do you know? Yeah, it's a Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Kylo is being used across uh, a few different places in the industry. It's really good at uh, kind of having a rapid start, a rapid entry into big data. Um, and I would say it's best suited for when you have uh, not just one feed that you want to kick off one time. I mean, it, it can be useful for that with, in its out-of-the-box configuration if you just have like a flat uh, data set and you want to get up and going quickly. Uh, but I, I would say that Kylo's real strength comes from uh, if you have one feed with a, a very common structure to you know, several other feeds that you also want to do ingestion on. And maybe you have you know, some, some people that aren't as familiar with big data technology that want to be able to use Kylo to bring up those additional feeds. Because you can create a really nice uh, user experience in Kylo about uh, I want to create another data ingestion feed for not, uh, not this website's res user registrations, but this other website's user registrations that uh, is basically the same format. Maybe it has a different schema or some other parameters are different. And in that way, Kylo can expose a user interface whereby uh, the person that's bringing up that feed can just put the, that information into the web UI and create additional feeds that way. That's all I had, guys. Thanks. Any more questions?